Good morning, students. Welcome back to the software engineering class. In this class, we are going to discuss about structure, design, methodology. In the last class, we discussed about design notation and specification, wherein we discussed about structure charts used for design notation. So in this class, we are going to discuss about structured design methodology. <clears throat> Creating the software system design is the major concern of the design phase. Many design techniques have been proposed over the years to provide some discipline in handling the complexity of designing a large system. The aim of design methodologies is not to reduce the process of design to a sequence of mechanical steps, but to provide guidelines to aid the designer during the design process. Okay. Now, what is the structured design methodology? This structured design methodology, SDM, view every software system as having some inputs that are converted into desired outputs by the software system. Once again, I tell you, software design methodology views every software system as having some inputs that are converted into the desired outputs by the software system. The software is viewed as a transformation function that transforms the given inputs into the desired outputs and the central problem of designing software systems is considered to be properly designing this transformation function. Okay. That is the aim. Factoring is used here. This factoring is the process of decomposing a module so that the bulk of its work is done by its subordinate modules. A system is said to be completely affected if all the actual processing is accomplished by bottom level atomic modules rather. And uh, basically it should be done by the atomic modules bottom level atomic modules. <laughs> In this structure design methodology, there are four steps, namely, <clears throat> restate the problem as a data flow diagram, then identify the input and the output data elements, then first level factoring, then factoring of input, output, and uh, transform branches, transform modules, and improving the structures. So these are the steps involved uh, in the structure design methodology. First, we see what is this uh, resetting the problem as a data flow diagram. <coughs> To use this uh, structural design methodology, the first step is to construct the data flow diagram for the problem. Already we have seen about this data flow diagram in the problem analysis. Here also we are going to revise it uh, here, but the way the data flow diagrams are handled in a problem analysis and for the design methodology is somewhat different. What is the difference? The fundamental difference between DFD for problem analysis and for this uh, structure design is in the problem analysis, DFD is drawn to model the problem domain. Okay. So the analyst has little control over the problem. Okay, whereas 
in the design uh, methodology the dfd represents how the data will flow in the system when it is built okay that is the difference between dfd of problem analysis and uh, structured design methodology okay the dfd shows the major transforms that the software will have and how the data will flow through the different transforms the second step is identifying the abstract inputs and uh, abstract outputs the goal of this step is to separate the transforms in the data flow diagram that convert the input or output to the desired format from the ones uh, that perform the actual transformations once again i tell you the there is a goal of this particular step the goal is to separate the transforms in the data flow diagram that convert the input or output to the desired format from the ones that perform the actual transformations the most abstract input data elements are those data elements in the data flow diagram that are farthest removed from the physical inputs but uh, can still be considered inputs to the system into, into the system that is the idea behind this identifying the abstract input and output data elements okay and the next uh, third step is this first level factoring so having identified the central transforms and the most abstract input and output data items we can identify some modules for the system so we specify a major module whose purpose is to invoke the subordinate modules this main ma ma module is therefore a coordinate mod module for each of the most abstract input data items an immediate subordinate module to the main module is specified okay each of these modules is an input module whose purpose is to deliver to the main module the most abstract data items for which it is created that is the uh, idea behind this first level factoring <clears throat> next step is uh, factoring the input output and the transform modules the purpose of an input module is to produce some data so to factor an input module the transform in the data flow diagram that produced the data item is treated as a central transformation the process performed for the first level factoring is repeated uh, with the new tra central transformations factoring of input modules will usually not yield any output subordinate uh, modules for our system and having uh, considered the four steps we have to improve the overall structure okay
Now, you see every step of this uh, software development, uh, that is namely requirement, after requirement analysis is done, that is verified. Then after uh, architecture, uh, architecture is verified. Then the design. Uh, once the design is performed, then it should be verified. So verification is an important activity in every stage of the software development. So here also the software design is verified. See? So the most common approach for verification uh, of the design review uh, uh, for verification is the design review. Okay. In other words, it is inspection. The purpose of the design review is to ensure that the design satisfies the requirements and is of good quality. If for some reason errors are made during the design process, then they will ultimately reflect in the upcoming code and the final system. The cost of removing faults caused by errors that occur during the design increases with the delay in de detecting the uh, errors. Earlier it is uh, identified lesser the cost. So it is best if the design errors are detected at the earliest. Detecting or finding errors in the design is the purpose of design reviews. So to find any errors in the design, some checklist is prepared. The elements of the checklist are, number one, is each of the functional requirements taken into account? Then, are there anal analysis to demonstrate that Performance requirements can be met. Are all assumptions explicitly stated or acceptable? Then, are there any limitations or constraints on the design beyond those in the requirements? Are external specifications of each module completely specified? Have exceptional conditions been handled? Are all the data formats consistent with the requirements? Are the operator and the user interfaces properly addressed? Is the design modeler and does it conform to local standards? Are the sizes of data success used estimated? So these are some of the checklists that should be checked during the verification of the design. Okay. As I tell you, told you repeatedly, <coughs> on completion of requirement analysis, there is a software matrix. Uh, after the requirement analysis is over. Then when the design comes up, then there should be a software metrics for that. As I repeatedly told you, software metrics are quantifiable measures that will tell whether the particular current process is going on in the right direction. It's a numerical value that will give you an idea about the stages of the particular development. Okay. So this function oriented design is also having a software matrix. It uses three metrics normally, network metrics, stability metrics, information flow metrics. That is, the, yeah, once again, I tell you network metrics, stability metrics, uh, information flow metrics. We have a detailed discussion, but to summarize it in a simple way, network metrics 
evaluate the structure charts and consider deviation from the tree as the metric signifying the quality of design once again i tell you network metrics evaluate the structure charts and consider deviation from the tree as the metric signifying the quality of design the next one the stability metrics tries to quantify how resistant the design is to the ripple effects <coughs> caused by changes of explicitly counting the number of assumptions modules make out about each other once again i tell you the stability matrix tries to quantify how resistant the design is to the ripple effects caused by changes by explicitly counting the number of assumptions modules make about each other and finally the information flow matrix define design complexity based on the internal complexity of the module and the number of connections between the modules so this is about uh, the software matrix for the function oriented design so this is one of the way of uh, uh, software design function oriented design we have yet another uh, technique uh, method design called object oriented design that is the most advanced uh, adv uh, advanced design methodology and that is uh, currently being used and that and that has its own merits okay reusability uh, data protection security uh, those things are uh, uh, advantages of object oriented design for that uh, you should have some familiarity about object oriented concepts or concepts which you have studied in your previous year like what is a class what is a object what is a abstraction what is encapsulation then uh, what is uh, inheritance then uh, what is the uh, instant variables class variables those things are required when we study about this object oriented design object oriented design i want you to come prepared for that object oriented design class with your basic knowledge of object orientation so that we will see in the next class see you